Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and we have with me again my brother Jose Rivera, my other good brother, Patrick Jones. Welcome back, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank it's you. good to be here. Thank you. All right. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, please. Dearest Father in heaven, Lord, we want to thank you for, again, the privilege, Lord, that you've been giving us week after week to come together and study your word, especially the book of Daniel and everything that pertains to a lot of the things we've been finding. We still need more of your word, more of your truth, more of your Holy Spirit, Lord, and we just ask that you bless us today as we proceed in Jesus name amen. amen 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 we have been talking lately about a judgment time uh, the date of the atonement the or the the, the the yeah the true or the real date of the atonement for us for our end time and we use Revelation 14 6 and 7 where it says that the hour of the judgment is come and the date of the atonement was that a date of judgment if I will ask you, what would have happened to somebody uh, in the old date of the date of the atonement that will not confess their sins, will not participate on that day, what would have happened to them? Leviticus 23, <clears throat> 29 says, For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So what do we suppose is going to happen to us at this end time if we were to make if we don't make our life right with God? We need to, we really need to look at our life in the mirror, like James says, and see if what we're eating, what we're drinking, what we're, how we're talking, what we're doing, everything about our life uh, is clean according to the Word of God. If it isn't, we need to repent and bring that sin beforehand to judgment, beforehand to Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. To our only priest. Our great high priest. Yes. Yeah, I just believe that we have to understand if we call ourselves Christians, that means we should live a life as Christ lived. Christ wasn't, uh, you know, using profanity, watching all kinds of sin and inappropriate things, all in the media and the entertainment today, all of these things are calculated to lead our minds away. We are living in such a time where because He's coming soon, we have to make sure that our heart is really in love with Jesus, Amen. examining ourselves so that when He comes, we'll be able to stand and meet Him. Amen. Amen. In the book of Daniel chapter 8, if you may, if I may ask you, Brother Patrick, can you give us a little bit of view in relationship to the day of the atonement or the sanctuary, uh, the cleansing of the sanctuary in heaven, okay? And because when we read the, the chapter, there is uh, something that Satan is trying to do, trying to keep humanity away from the true sanctuary, from the true day of the atonement that is taking place from above, from heaven. Can, yeah. you, can you give a little summary? Well, in Daniel 8, he has a vision, and it's interesting that in the vision he seems a ram and a he-goat. Uh, and the other vision he saw wild beasts of prey. This, this is a ram and a he-goat, two sanctuary animals that were used on the Day of Atonement. Okay. And one represent, the ram represented Medo-Persia, very appropriately, two horns, the higher one, the Persians. And then the he-goat was the Grecian Empire, and Gabriel explains this in Daniel 8.20. And the great horn was Alexander the Great. He, he uh, conquers the ram, and then his kingdom is split up into four horns. Mm -hmm. And that represented the time when his kingdom was divided among his four generals. And out of one of those <laughs> came a little horn. This represented the Roman Empire in its two phases, pagan Rome and the second papal Rome. And Papal Rome especially would uh, 
Pagan Rome would, would, uh, would expand horizontally across the face of the earth, it says, uh, to the east, to the south, and, and uh, to the glorious land. But then the Papal Rome, in uh, verse 10, would wax great even to the host of heaven. This was a vertical attack in, because Christ was now not on earth. He was in the heavenly sanctuary. And Satan wanted to attack Christ's work there to hide it, to block it from the view of the people. And so he waxed, the Pope, the Bishop of Rome, would wax very great, uh, in verse 10, wax great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground. This is God's people and the ministers stamped on them upon the ground. He magnified himself even to the prince of the host. That's the Pope. Uh, putting himself in the place of Christ. So now people would confess their sins not to Christ directly, but you had to go through a priest. <coughs> the priests all represented the Pope who had the power to forgive sins. And it says, uh, he magnified himself to the Prince of the Host, that's Jesus, and by him the daily was taken away. This represents many aspects of Christ's ministry in the holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down, cast down from the thinking and the, and the uh, knowledge of God's people for during the time it would practice and prosper. A host was given him against the daily by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered for 1260 years of time. According to chapter 8 of Daniel, this little horn, which will turn into a big power as we have a study and we have seen that the fulfillment throughout the history mm -hmm. especially nowadays this is a wo worldwide <laughs> uh, political power uh, the, uh, all the presidents all the prime ministers they pay homage 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 you know to this power now it seems like a, they will be even trying to transfer the function of the heavenly sanctuary into the earth, according to verse uh, 11 and 12. Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay, so uh, we, don't have to, we don't need to read it. Our viewers, our listeners can read it by their own. So, so well did they do that, that by the end of that time, end of its period, people didn't even know about the heavenly sanctuary. They thought the sanctuary to be cleansed would be planet earth. Mm. Verse 14, chapter 8 on uh, Daniel. Yes. Well, let me, uh, let me give just a small synopsis here. I kind of touched on the last program, but I want to bring it again and then transition. Uh, Brother Patrick, as he was mentioning, in the vision we saw four major components. First mm -hmm. was the ram, then was the goat, then was the little horn that had two phases, as you mentioned, and then the last one was a time prophecy. The angel that came to explain this to Daniel was Gabriel. And if you read it there in chapter 8 and verse 16, it says, Make this man to understand. Now, we read of Gabriel, this same angel, this same angel in Luke 1 and verse 19. This is when he appeared to Mary. The very fact that we see Gabriel in the New Testament shows that he's still an obedient angel. He hasn't been cast out of heaven for rebellion. So the fact that he's obedient shows that if he was commanded to make Daniel understand, he has to fulfill that commandment. And notice at the end of this chapter, he explained three out of the four. He explained the ram, he explained the goat, he explained that little horn. But he never got a chance to explain that time prophecy. Therefore, the chapter ends by saying Daniel fainted, was six certain days, after rose, I arose and did the king's business. I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. And so Gabriel, he couldn't be a, a disobedient angel. He must return to explain the time prophecy, which we will see here in Daniel chapter 9. Yes, because there was a prophecy, a long prophecy, that has been mentioned already to Daniel about the 2300 days and night, oh, 2300 days. Years. That's right. Okay, so let's go, let's move along then. Okay, since we cover another thing though, before we go there, uh, on the same chapter 8, 
So I want our listeners to know that this is for the end time. Read uh, verses uh, 8, 17, and 19, please. Read 14, too. It says, So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. Mm -hmm. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. <clears throat> so anyway, and, and he repeated again in verse 19, um, verse 25. What I'm trying to bring over here is, uh, this was something that is going to, for the end time. That's right. Again, it could not be applied to, Antiochus Epiphanes, or to Nero, or to none of the pagan emperors, as you know, and we read in, in Roman Catholic Bibles and books. That's right. It cannot be. It's impossible. Well, you know, Daniel, because he didn't understand, Daniel was trying to wrap his mind around this. Didn't understand what? He didn't understand the time prophecy. Could you read it in verse 14? Yes, verse 14 says, And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Yeah. Daniel did not understand the time prophecy because it was the last thing that, that Gabriel was able to explain to him. Mm -hmm. So as a result of this, he's trying to wrap his mind. He remembered reading the book of Jeremiah, chapter 25, that only 70 years would be accomplished in uh, Jerusalem's chastisement. And then he realized, how does this make sense? Are we supposed to be in captivity this much longer? And he began praying and confessing his sins. Now, that's the very first part of Daniel chapter 9. But notice now as we get to Daniel 9 and verse 20. It says, And while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision, the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, he touched me about the time of the evening oblation, and he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Praise the Lord. Let's hold that thought right there. We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Welcome back. My brother Patrick, you want to clarify a little more about these issues, that, these prophecies that is taking place right here in chapter 8 or chapter, in chapter 9? Yes, uh, in Dan Daniel chapter 8 is a very important prophecy. While verses 10, 11, and 12 are, are showing the work of the papacy and its attack on the heavenly sanctuary and trying to block the view of Christ's work there and replacing it with a with a earthly. Earth, an earthly priesthood, um, Gabriel gets concerned. And verse 13 and 14 is very important. It says, Then I heard one saint speaking unto that certain saint which spake, and said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? Now, the margin of verse 13 for that certain saint is palmoni, which means the number of secrets or the wonderful number, and it's referring to Jesus Christ. And, that, and the saint that was first speaking, Daniel identifies as Gabriel in chapter 9 and verse 21. So Gabriel and, and Jesus are talking to a, each other. Gabriel asks them the question, how long will this vision concerning the vision, concerning the daily be, and to give the host and the sanctuary to be trodden underfoot. Notice how God's people and the sanctuary go together. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus, it says in verse 14, Jesus says unto me, Daniel. So that means that Jesus wants God's people, represented by Daniel, to understand this. 
unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be restored, and that word, or that word cleansed, it shall be cleansed. And the Hebrew word also, can also mean restored. It will, the true knowledge of the sanctuary would be brought back to God's people. Amen. And so it's not a coincidence that this studies and this understanding is coming at this end time along with the three angels' messages as we spoke before. That's right, Amen. that's right. Well, let's take a look at this in Daniel chapter 9. When Gabriel finally comes to Daniel to fulfill the command that was given him in Daniel 8, 16 that he had to make Daniel understand, <coughs> he begins to explain the understanding of this time prophecy. And notice what he says in verse 24. This is the, the beginning portions of this time prophecy. Mm -hmm. He says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. The word determined means to be cut off. And to be cut off from means to be a segment of the whole 2300 days. So, seventy weeks are apportioned for it. And notice some of the things that were to be accomplished within these 70 weeks. It says to finish the transgression and to make reconciliation for, forgive me, and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring everlasting righteousness to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. There were six or seven things there that had to be accomplished within this. And so it's very clear here that this was the beginning portion of the prophecy. And, and I can't help but to think that anointing the most holy, bringing in everlasting right. I mean, who brought us righteousness? Jesus. Jesus Christ. And so this is one of the heavier prophecies of Christ in the Bible. Because remember, Christ says in Mark chapter 1 and verse 15, He says, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Why would he say the time is fulfilled? He must have been talking about a prophecy for the fulfilling of a time. And the only one that really pointed, especially to that prophecy, as we're going to look at a little more here, starts right here. Oh, Jesus. Now, the 70 weeks, how many years is that in real timing? 70 weeks in prophecy. Well, each week having seven days. Explain. Uh, a week is seven days. Mm -hmm. a, and a day in prophecy represents a year. Okay. So seven times 70, 70 weeks, would be 490 weeks, 490 years. Years. Okay. And, or, or days, 490 days, or years. In prophecy, yeah. days, in literal time, years. Can we find in the history that those 490 years, at the end of those 490 years, can we find that portion that uh, fulfilled to the very letter? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Can, can we move on then? Yeah. 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 Okay. In, order, in order to find the ending of it, we got to see the beginning of it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Notice the beginning in verse 25. It says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. It's very clear here that the starting point would be from a commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem, remembering at this time that the people of God, Daniel, in his actual day, they were still in captivity to the powers that be. I don't know if we have time, but in the book of Esdras, you I got tell it. us. You got it? Yeah, Good. What, what's the... Uh, Ezra chapter 4, verse 24, okay. 424. 424. Yes, because it's good to find the it's starting point. Okay? It's in chapter 7, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Well, I got, okay. Uh, you, you can read also Ezra 424 around there. And, uh, okay, go ahead, read it then. Well, 424 what says, it? Then the work ceased, the work of the house of God which is at Jerusalem. So it ceased until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Oh, okay. The, and the order was given to, to restore Jerusalem. Well, uh, then that was the work 
That well, well there, there's a three. There's a threefold commandment that we see. The first one was from Cyrus in Ezra one. Right. The next one was from Darius in Ezra chapter six. Right. And the main one that fits the prophecy the most is the decree from Artaxerxes okay. in Ezra chapter seven. Oh. Okay. Okay. Let's go. And the verse I'm looking for is Ezra six fourteen. Okay. Let's read it. And it says, "The elders of the Jews builded, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai." the prophet, and Zechariah, the son of Idu, and they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And what year was that commandment given, that order given to restore the temple? Well, it says clearly in Ezra 7 and verse 8 that he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. Historically, the seventh year of the king, he started in 464, B.C., of course, going backwards. Right. The seventh year would have been 457 B.C. Right there at the year 457, it started the 70 weeks, the 490 years that Gabriel has said has been determined, has been cut off That's right. to your people, to who... Whose people were Daniel's people? Well, the Hebrews, the, the Jews. The, the, the Jews, right? Yes. Okay. Notice that it was a threefold command of three Persian kings, but it was also the command of God uh, I, working yes, through yes. them. Well, trying to find it in the history, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's Four, good. Yeah. 457 B.C. 457 is the starting point. Okay, let's go 457, Brother Jose. 457. To, it would take us up to what year? It would take us through over the years of B.C. into A.D. Right. And so you have to add one because there's no zero year there. Right. And then when you come all the way full circle, it would land on 34 A.D. And there was a significant event that happened. Right here, I hope that we will be able to show right there in the screen a diagram of, the, of this prophecy. Because there's so much confusion out there into this 400, especially the last seven years of this 490 years. Remember, these sev the 70 weeks were cut off for thy people, the Jews. Right. And, uh, okay, C can we go briefly over here uh, on the chapter 9? Because it, it describes what would take place up to the very end of those 490 years. That's right. Why I'm bringing this up? Because there's some false theory that they take the final week, the final seven years, and transfer it to the end, you know, to, to, you know, after the church has been taken to heaven. That's impossible. That's right. Well, if you remember the story of a man named Stephen, he was stoned. Acts chapter 7, Acts chapter 8, right around that area, 6 and right. 7 and 8. When you read that story, that was the closing of the probation for the Jews. Remember, Christ told His disciples, Go not to the Gentiles, He says, Preach to the sheep, or the, the lost sheep, or the house of Israel. And it wasn't until Stephen's stoning that afterwards, that's when the gospel started going out to the others. So that was the closing point at the stoning of Stephen. He looked up and he saw Christ standing next to the throne of God. And of course, when we say close of probation, you know, to the Jews, we are not talking about as, a, as individuals, talking about as a nation. Yes, their corporate favor with God, you could okay. say. Okay, I, I, I like that. Because uh, the individual Saul later repented. And right, right, and, and many Jews came in, and many Jews can come in today, too. That's right. Okay, uh, okay, so let's go, because the Bible give us detail, what would have happened in the last seven years of those 490 years. That's right. At, at, the, at the beginning of that seven years, there will be somebody who will be anointed. That's who right. was that? It was Christ. Okay. The Bible says that there should be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. And that brings you down to 69. Okay. 69th out of 70 weeks. It brings us to 27 AD. That's right. What took place in the year 27 AD? It just so happens that Christ, when He came to His earthly ministry, He was baptized by John the Baptist. And the Bible says in Luke that He was about 30 years old at that time. What does the word Messiah mean? Messiah. What? The, the anointed. The anointed the one. Anointed. The anointed one. The anointed one. And when He came, what happened? When He came up out of that water, what fell upon Him? The Holy Spirit. That's right. He, and, and let me read this quickly. 
he was anointed here in Luke chapter 3, his baptism. In Luke chapter 4, one of the very first stories that we read about, he went to the desert immediately. He was tempted of the devil, got victory over him. When he came back in verse 18 of Luke 4, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. He just testified what just happened when he was baptized. Amen. Okay, so on the last one, uh, the year 27, that's when the 69 weeks in and prophecy. That's when it ended. Ended, that's yes. what I'm saying, ended at that time. So uh, the, first, the first half of that week or seven years, that was to be anointed. And what else would have happened right at the middle of that seven week, seven, uh, of that week? That's right. Of that seven years, oh, what happened to that? In the middle of the 70th week. Right. 70th week. What happened? Yeah. Yes, the, the Bible says that as it prophesied here in Daniel 9, that in the midst of the week, the Messiah would be cut off. Uh, what happened in the year 31st? Uh, of A.D., that's of right. our Christian era. What 31 happened? A.D., that's when Christ was crucified for humanity. In verse 27... As the fulfillment of the prophecy. That's right. Verse yeah. 27 yeah. repeats that okay. Hebrew poetry, uh -huh. and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Right. And the yes. sacrifices and oblation ceasing. That's what we spoke about in the last program. That's what was nailed to the cross. Many of those ceremonial things. Remember that veil ripped right in half? That right. was in the middle of when the seventh When the priest week. was about to sacrifice the lamb, That's right. the veil, the Bible says in the gospel, that it ripped off from top to bottom. That's right. This declaring what? To, me, to, me, to humanity. Declaring to that, the that, that the earthly sanctuary was no longer, and now we look to Christ going to the heavenly sanctuary. And that the earthly priesthood ended. Ended. Period. Ended. Finished. What time of year did that happen? In the year spring, 31st. Springtime. In the spring the, of 31 AD. Spring, Passover day. That, oh man, that's, that's deep. That's good. That yeah. means the beginning of the week started in the fall of 27 A.D. It ends in the fall of 34 A.D. And then we know that the beginning of the 2300 days was in the fall, and it would end in the fall at the end of 2300 days. Well, that will be another good study that we can bring in another time. Yes. This, is so, this is so powerful, Pastor, because it tells us exactly the prophecy of Christ. Many of the evangelicals today teach that this is some prophecy way in the end, but we have to realize it's for today. If I mean, you don't understand so this, you don't have a Messiah. And if you don't understand that, you're going to miss it. You might miss the Messiah. That's right. Our oh, dear friends, it's time to close again. And we are so sad to tell you that, yes, we're coming to an end of this program, but guess what? We're going to continue with this study and, but in the meantime, let's hold to Jesus. He's our Savior. He's our priest. And He's in the most holy place in the sanctuary for you and me. God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel. P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.